Did you know that a child's math ability is most strongly shaped in the early years and is a good predictor of general academic success? That's our focus today on the Inside Scoop. Hello and welcome back to the Inside Scoop. I'm your host, David Owen. Math is sometimes considered the boogeyman of subjects, but it doesn't have to be. Reading literacy tends to be emphasized early in a child's life for greater success in reading. Math literacy can work in the same way. Here to take some of the mystery out of how you can make that happen is Compton Elementary's math teacher extraordinaire, Tim O'Neill. Tim, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, David. Appreciate now, it. Your actual title is... Academic coach? Academic coach, that's correct. I I think I'd prefer math teacher extraordinaire, but that's just me, maybe. (laughs) I'll take either. (laughs) Okay. Um, So in the open, I mentioned that math literacy um, is basically as important in those early years as reading literacy. We hear about reading uh, to your child all the time as they're they're developing, even before coming into the school system. why is math literacy so important in those same early years? Yeah, great question. It's uh, my wife and I have a, a seven-year-old and a five-year-old at home at the moment, so it's been interesting having gone through the beginning of my teaching career mm-hmm. without children, and then you know the last seven years with the kids and seeing their development as well. Yeah, and just thinking through um, a little bit of how things can start to become automatic. And and really we need to give our kids all sorts of exposures and experiences with numbers. Um, the, the more we can increase those exposures and experiences and the more comfortable they're going to be. So, um, getting comfortable with counting and understanding objects and magnitude and size and that sort of thing, um, is incredibly important so that when they get to school age, um, and even throughout elementary school and beyond things become a little bit more automatic as well. So uh, it's interesting because a lot of times as, as adults, we take so much for granted now, right? And, but when it comes to math and, and uh, really young children, just getting them to understand what numbers mean is a big step, right? I mean, that's a milestone. Absolutely. Right? It sure is. Um, if you, you know, speak to an adult who's not used to teaching kindergarten, you say, hey, how do you teach two plus three or something along those lines? And yeah. it's, that can be difficult because thinking through the metacognition of, well, how am I thinking about that? Um, because really, for many of us, that becomes automatic, and we don't really even understand maybe exactly what's happening when we're thinking about that. Yeah. Um, and trying to break that down for our kids and for our students is an interesting thought, um, just to, to truly make sense of it. Okay. By the way, I need to get a like a, a yellow flag or something to throw whenever <laughs> you, you have one of those academic terms. Metacognition. <laughs> What does that mean? Thinking about our own thinking. Um, okay. So just being aware of our own thought process, sort of. Very interesting. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. How are we understanding things, I guess, mm-hmm. is another way to put that. All right. So how can parents help their children in the home uh, develop a positive mindset toward math? We always hear, uh, well, uh, for those of us who have had children who go through homework uh, struggles relating to math, they have a tendency to say, I'm just not good at math. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, it, it's almost like talking themselves into not doing well. How can a parent change that or, or head that off in the early years? Yeah, our language matters in a very large way. Um, you know, if you've ever attempted to to lecture a child, we know that frequently that doesn't work very well, right? <laughs> well, unfortunately, um, <laughs> I have many times. Yeah, same here, guilty. Um, but we know that they're frequently watching us and learning from our actions and our words more so than the words that sometimes we're directly, um, you know, giving straight to them. So yeah. I think just as we come across various different problems, and I know that many of us are probably not working on math homework as much at home, but just what other whatever other problems that we're facing, um, just modeling that, you know, I might not know right away, but I know I can work to figure this out. I can put in the work. And one of the things that we say at home frequently is um, thinking takes time and it's okay to spend some time thinking through something. That's true. And deep thinking gains or gives us better understanding, right? Absolutely. So, um, and, and this is a little bit of a side question for you, but uh, in, in the old days, um, <laughs> <laughs> the math uh, frequently was more of a memorization thing, you know, the multiplication tables and mm-hmm. so forth. That's not at all the way things go nowadays, right? It, the The goal is not only being able to do the math, but it's to understand it. Is that accurate? I, I do think there's a very large emphasis on the reasoning at this point in time. Yeah. Um, I've been 
honored to be with Cobb County now for this is my 21st year and it's changed from the beginning of my career until now I would say as well but you also think about how our country has changed how our access to tools have changed as well um, we're all kind of walking around typically with a calculator in our pocket or in a purse or <laughs> exactly. something along those lines um, access to AI as well and that sort of thing um, so when you think about computation, computation, excuse me, mm -hmm. there's opportunities for resources for computation all over the place, which doesn't mean that that's not important for us to still know how to do. Right. Um, but I do think that there's been a shift where we need to continue to think through the mathematical reasoning um, and the thinking that you mentioned as well, that we need to continue to develop that also. So it doesn't hurt to memorize, but it is a good idea to make sure they understand what that result is all about, right? I think when we think about deep learning, um, people kind of think about what that might mean in a variety of different ways, right? right? So do we want our students and our kids to eventually become automatic with their times tables and their multiplication and division? Yes. Um, I don't know that the best way of doing that is forcing the memorization onto our students. Okay. Um, so spending time developing relationships and understanding how numbers relate to each other is incredibly important mm -hmm. um, in order for that deep learning to occur. Um, my daughter, I mentioned earlier, is seven years old, and she's not necessarily automatic with some things, but she can figure things out and yeah. has ways of figuring things out. So therefore, she's still pretty fluent with her mathematics, mm -hmm. um, even though the memorization piece is not there. So. At, at this point in time, it's going to come. Right. And and the memorization, like you, you're saying, is um, almost as a, a byproduct of continual working problems, right? Absolutely. As I mentioned earlier, the exposures and the experiences, um, when you have those deep level experiences, it's going to become automatic. Yeah. So I kind of prefer the word, and I know um, fluency is kind of defined in different ways, but frequently defined as... Um, being automatic, being efficient, and being flexible. Yeah. Um, I think maybe when you and I were growing up, we were thinking about knowing our multiplication facts just from memory and knowing them automatically, but we want that automaticity to come from um, repeated exposures and being efficient and flexible with it so that it becomes automatic. Yeah. Okay. Um, and by the way, I, I think you're either giving me really good credit or you are older than you look <laughs> so thank you for we're that. we're probably the same age or at least yeah. one you know yeah, that's nearby uh, <laughs> all right um so uh, a, a while back uh, actually not that long ago we did a podcast on homework and the struggles that some kids have with homework and uh perhaps we'll place that link on the the uh, in the description or show notes but um Specifically, when it comes to the math homework and the struggles that um, students endure, not all struggles are bad, right? I mean, it's, it's kind of like lifting weights. Sure. If, if you can lift every weight very quickly, then you're not really accomplishing much. But if you're having to struggle and push a little bit, that's a good thing. It grows you. So how, how does a parent know when it's a healthy struggle versus there might need to be some some help here. Yeah, we definitely want to find that appropriate zone, right? Um, something too difficult is going to cause all sorts of frustration. Something too easy is right. not worth doing at that point in time. So yeah. um, just finding that uh, kind of that sweet spot of the appropriate amount of struggle, like you mentioned. Um, there's actually a term in weightlifting kind of called progressive overload. Uh -huh. um, and I kind of mentioned this earlier, as far as students need to go through the experiences too, there's there are no shortcuts. There's no getting around mathematical development. We have to experience it and go through it in order to develop. Um, so I think one of the ways that we can really help support our kids at home, um, if we're not mathematical experts at this point in time, maybe we're <laughs> learning and growing along with our kids. Um, <laughs> less but, and less so every, every decade, I think. Right, is um, thinking through asking questions and, and prompting mm -hmm. that way. Um, you know, what do you know about the problem? Where can we begin? Where should we start? Um, what's happening in the problem? Having conversations about the um, the comprehension of a problem too. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> and ju just a moment ago, you you mentioned essentially that um, as math teaching techniques advance and students are learning, and and as parents, as we get farther and farther away from our own uh, math education, unless you use it in a daily environment. Um, 
it's kind of hard for a parent to be the expert, right? I mean, how how can families, how can parents help support their student in their learning if the parent themselves maybe would struggle in the same way as the student? Yeah. Um, I want to answer that question. I want to kind of go back for a second, too, because it's interesting to think about what our own mathematical experiences might have been mm -hmm. in school. Oh, for sure. Um, and I was working with teachers not too long ago, and I loved this comment. One of our teachers said, this is what I do in the grocery store. Uh -huh. um, and I thought well, that yeah. that was phenomenal, right? Because yeah. when we were growing up, maybe the priority might have been more of these are the steps, follow these steps, it must go exactly this way. And that's not the case anymore at this point in time. Yeah. So um, even the idea of getting out to the grocery store, going to the hardware store, bringing them into the kitchen and helping with cooking and working on projects at home and different things like that. The, the more experiences they can have doing that type of work and even thinking from a larger picture of problem solving. So like a lot of times in the math world, we think of problem solving as being solving problems, solving numerical problems, right? but it's like spreadsheet stuff. Yeah. Even the, the, having the cognitive flexibility of, for example, even me coming over here today, I had to think about like, what time do I need to leave? How long is it going to take me to get there? What's yeah. traffic going to look like? And thinking through some of the executive functioning of those steps, that's also problem solving. Um, so anytime that we have an opportunity to support our kids with that and really think out loud um, as far as do we have all the ingredients that we need to follow a recipe? What happens if we don't have all the ingredients? Mm -hmm. um, how can we substitute something? Um, if we don't have all the ingredients, is the whole meal over and we're doing frozen pizza? I do that the other night. Um, <laughs> if Dad's in charge, yeah. <laughs> right, it might be. Um, but just being really flexible to solve problems like that as yeah. well can come into play. And then obviously you have all the measurement that's going into the kitchen or um, working with tools and measuring and, and that sort of thing. Um, so incredibly powerful. And I know we talked earlier about the importance of exposures at a young, early age, mm -hmm. um, but they, then students can see the relevance of how it applies as well. Yeah, that, I, actually, that was going to be my next question, was, was bringing that real-world uh, relevance into the classroom or into the homework situation. But just a moment ago, you mentioned the uh, you know, cooking and so forth. When little kids, I'm talking about preschool kids, are playing shop or you know, storekeeper or whatever, mm -hmm. um, they're actually kind of learning about math. I mean, absolutely. It, okay. And in a variety of different ways too, right? Yeah. If you're playing with uh, play coins or you have real coins out or whatever it might be, um, even thinking through the, the parental prompting that goes into that too. You know, um, I gave you five coins and to purchase something and how many coins am I going to get back and different things like that. Yeah. Um, and then obviously with older ages, you can apply the value of what each coin is. Um, and I think that's one of the neatest things when we think about mathematical progressions too, uh -huh. is that some similar routines like that um, can work for students in very different, very different places with their mathematical development. Now, one of the best life lessons I ever learned actually came in high school. Um, my, my math teacher actually told the entire class, once you have finished your, your problem, step back just erase the problem from your mind, look at it fresh and think, is the answer even uh, reasonable? Reasonable. It, mm -hmm. it, just that, that judgment statement alone can really help guide a student into, oh, that can't be right, mm -hmm. and go back and, and revisit things, right? Yeah. I don't know that as a student, I understood the importance of estimating um, yeah. and how that is incredibly important. But when you think as an adult, we mentioned the grocery store, the hardware store, or wherever else it might be. Yeah. How often are we estimating? Something costs fourteen ninety nine. You're probably not calculating something exactly to think through. Okay, fourteen ninety nine, and I'm buying this many items at fourteen ninety nine. Right? We're going to think about fifteen dollars, and roughly how much is it going to be? Right. Um, so that's that's a skill that we do all the time, but we've got to make that relevant for our kids um, at home and in school as well to show sure. them what the importance of that is. So. Um, what role should technology play? I mean, it's so easy for parents, uh, you know, uh, thinking of maybe somebody at home who's trying to clean up the house and they've got a preschooler and it's like, well, here, sit in front of the computer and do these, these problems on this program. Mm -hmm. What role should technology play in supporting a, a math brain development in, sure. in our children? Um, 
I think it plays a role. I think it's incredibly important for our kids also to be from the creative side to also um, think through additional problem solving of what do I do when I'm bored? Sometimes like we do that at home too, (laughs) because we we try not to get the screens out too often um, in order for our kids to be bored, in order for our kids to come up with something to do. Because that that is also problem solving. Yes. Um, And it's wild to kind of point out when they play with various different toys, the creativity that comes from that and the problem solving that comes from doing that sort of work also. But I do think that technology has its place. Um, I don't think it should be the primary driver of what we're doing. I think we need to get our hands on things um, yeah. at home and in the classroom as well um, because it just makes math come to life also. Um, so I think you know, if you're thinking about pulling in some technology, I think that's totally fine. Um, but I would kind of analyze what, what web resource or tool you're planning on using to make sure that the conceptual understanding is there okay. um, and make sure that um, it's not, it's primary focus is not on memorization, but is on deep, authentic learning. Okay. So, uh, cup schools has CTLS, mm-hmm. you know, and we've got a lot of online things there. Are there, and I'm not saying that that would be it, but are there some, uh, online resources that particularly parents of, of younger, uh, kids can grab onto as, Hey, this is kind of our go-to, or are there several that you could cite that might fall into that category you were describing? Yeah. I, I think, um, I might recommend just reaching out to the child's teacher at that point in time too, okay. because there are several, but I think depending upon what direction, um, the class has experienced and that sort of thing. And, yeah. and I think that can sometimes vary from school to school a little bit on preference. Um, so I know we have some that we have purchased at our school uh-huh. um, and have utilized as well. But um, I think reaching out to the teacher would be a good move there. Okay. And for those who are uh, parents of, of younger kids before preschool kids, uh, maybe we can drop a few links in the show notes and description there that might have some helpful things, always with the caveat of uh, know what you're getting into. You don't want to find that suddenly uh, your kid signed you up for 48 months of That's subscription right. to something. <laughs> That's always the risk. But, uh, well, Tim, thank you so much for coming in and sharing uh, these insights. I know that math is, is kind of a scary area for a lot of parents. Maybe it wasn't a good experience in, in their uh, career of uh, academics. But uh, this certainly is helpful to know you don't have to know all the answers. You just have to know how to support your student and, and teacher, right? That's right. And, and communicate with a teacher. Appreciate yeah. you coming in and sharing. Thank you, David. I appreciate it. Though the mindset of this discussion has been on those early years, it's never too late to help your child with who may be struggling with math. Encouraging positive self-talk, resilience, and some grace to expect mistakes can go a long way toward success, too. So if you heard something helpful, click that like button, subscribe, and share it with a friend. Thank you for listening to this edition of the Inside Scoop, a podcast produced by the Cobb County School District.